Yes, lovely people. Hope you're well. Welcome back to another episode of Combat Catch Up. Joined as always by the two legends, that is Jamie Phillips and Luke Tanner. Boys, how are we doing this evening? Not too Good, bad, then. Good. Not too Good. bad. Decent, I've, decent, I've, decent. I've, I've eaten all my Easter eggs. I feel a bit sad. <laughs> but yeah, I'm right. yeah I'm, I'm going to make my. I'm, I'm gonna make my way through the kids' Easter eggs and just say that something something happened I, to it. Eight eggs of it. I <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's the best pasta Easter now. Like we don't have to buy our own, we just eat the kids' ones, innit? <laughs> yeah, because the kids never eat them all. You like, exactly, they can't. Too much chocolate is bad for you. Are you eating are, are you eating that mini egg over there? No, okay. Right. <laughs> no, no, okay, I'll use that to later, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Right on this show, they're going to be speaking about Ian Gary vowing to retire Colby Covington. Matt Brown speaks out about UFC's gloves. We're going to speak about Fioro and what is next for after a win against Blanchfield. The UFC going to Saudi Arabia with a blockbuster main event, and George Saint Pierre speaks about what would happen if he fought Khabib. Please, before we get started, though, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, but most importantly, head over to the two links that are in the description. That is Luke's channel and Jamie's channel, and go and subscribe and support the guys. Right, guys, Ian Gary and Colby Covington have been going back and forth for a little bit now, and uh, Ian Gary came out with uh, this to share. So I'm going to play a video clip and let me know what you guys think of it. I don't think the guy deserves any respect in the world, to be honest with you, man. He talks, yeah. but I'll step into the octagon and I'll retire him. That's my goal. My whole goal to when I fight Kobe Covington is so that he never puts on MMA gloves ever again. Do you have a dating mind that you think it would be ideal? I, I don't know. I'd like to fight maybe International Fight Week. You know what I mean? It, look, if Kobe wants to fight in his back garden tomorrow, yeah. I will fly to Miami and fight him at his back garden. There's no way, like, I don't care when it is. I just want him as the opponent. I want him to be a man and step into the octagon and face his fears. Face the man who he's talked a lot about and watch what happens when you get in there. Ian Gary, not one to mince his words and hasn't minced his words here. Um, since the, well, since Colby's last fight with Leon Edwards, where he was this easily beaten, by a unanimous decision. The build-up to that fight was obviously a lot was to do with Ian Gary. And obviously, he pulled out of the fight of pneumonia. But the talk the whole week leading into the fight was, what's Colby and Sean Strickland going to say about, you know, Ian Gary and Ian Gary's wife? Colby continued to double down and has still been speaking about his wife. Now, all three of us are in relationships. And... We've got our significant other off. Now, I get it's the fight game. Is Ian Gary right to have this approach, though? Luke, I'll start with you. Yes, he is. However, he is a hypocrite. Talk to me, Luke. He is a hypocrite. Remember what he said about Neil Magny, mm -hmm. about his kids, yeah. insinuating that he was something that he's not. Yeah, something that Neil Magny is still having issues with, I think, to this day, because of Ian Gary. He can't be the boy that cried wolf. And now, of of course, the way that Colby does it, you know, we know he's a character, mm. and he's ramped that up to a hundred. However, that is no difference. I'm not saying what Colby Covington's doing is is right, by the way, because it's not. However. He's done what the same thing that he's done to Neil Magny and Colby is just doing what he sort of did, but he's turned it up to 100 sort of thing. So, yes, he can come with all this talk. But to be honest, like he, he's not making it easy for himself. He's just not. He's just not. He's just not making it easy for himself. And they said that he wants to retire in while. Like, I don't see that killer in him. I don't see that killer in him that he can go and retire him because he's had two guys that he should have killed in that octagon if he was a killer. If he was a killer, then he would have put out Neil Magny and he would have put out Jeff Neal. In that Jeff Neal fight, I saw a runner, not a killer. I saw a runner. 
in that octagon. No. Well, I guess not it's not me. just Ian Gary. He doesn't mince their words. He's more, <laughs> yeah, he's more Brazilian Portuguese than, than he is Ireland. He wants to get rid of his Irish passport. I'm more Irish than you, son, yeah? Yeah, you, you uh, football gospel said it perfect. Luke will dash Ian Gary under the bus any time of the day. <laughs> Jay <laughs> Colby Covington's been known for running his mouth, and sometimes he backs it up, sometimes he doesn't. Do you think he's actually going about this because he actually wants to fight, or do you think he's just doing this just to stay relevant in the media? Stay relevant. Oh, he's got you know, it's all Kobe's got there is his mouth, ain't it? Um yeah, he's just started doing it to stay relevant. And Ian Gary, you know, he he's doing the same things, in my opinion. I think Ian Gary's quite an average fighter. I don't think he's going to have a great career. And he, 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 he wants this fight with Colby because it's an easy fight. Because Colby's done. But is he, You know, Is he an easy fight, though? I was just going to ask yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, it just because pick if him Colby off. takes him down, yeah, Ian Gary, I know he's been training in Brazil. Would with Charles, but but Colby's an, an experienced wrestler. Yeah, like all it's gonna take is Colby to to get him down. Then I think it's a long night. Obviously, to get him down is a different thing. Yeah, but... I, 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 I just <laughs> I, I I just don't know if Colby's got it anymore to do it for three or five rounds. That's the problem, and. It's an easy, I just feel like it'd be an easy night for Ian Gary, and he knows that. that's why he's picking on it. Plus, it gets attention, it gets him more publicity, and that's all Ian Gary wants. He wants publicity. That's why he talks the way he does. Uh, the thing I will say about Colby, Colby's actually been there and done it and had a better career than Ian Gary. So, it, you know, I actually think I'd. I, I, I'd probably cheer on Colby Covington if they fought and be absolutely honest. <laughs> do, you know what, Jay, do you know what? That was going to be my next question. I was actually thinking the same, you know. Because this is almost like a heel versus heel. If it was, was wrestling terms, it's almost a heel versus a heel. And yeah. ultimately, in a heel versus a heel, someone still gets cheered, someone still gets booed. Given what Colby said, though, is Ian Gary that unlikable that people would still cheer for Colby over Ian Gary, do you think? I think, I think people will find Colby amusing. I hmm. do think people will find Colby amusing. Uh, there's nothing funny about Ian Gary. Mm. Luke, do you agree? I, do you know what? Because it's going to be in America, um, this fight, Colby's going to get cheered. Like, like he is going to get cheered because, rightly or wrongly, Ian Gary's going to get cooked. And the second he pulled out of the fight with Pomonia, he knew he was going to get cooked. Mm. Because people don't want to care that he was injured or he was ill. People just see it as he's a pussy. He pulled out because he couldn't take the cooking in the press conference rather than the beating in the octagon. Like, that's what we're seeing. Luke is PGMO. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a that's a nasty comment. That's a nasty PGMO. Do you Jeez. think the fight makes sense for Gary, though? Because obviously Colby's above him in the rankings, but Colby's had three losses in title fights, probably won't get another title shot again, and isn't seen as one of the elite welterweights, even though his ranking's there. Is this a fight that actually propels Gary to potentially a title shot, even boost up the rankings? Or do you think he gets credit if he goes out there and beats Colby Covington? In, in, or does he have to do it by a KO, in your opinion? Col if they, if he fights Colby and wins, it's the biggest fight of his career. So if he wins that, just from name value, mm -hmm. just from name value itself, mm -hmm. it's uh, and that's why I think he's looking at Colby because I, I do think he feels like it'd be an easy fight for him. And Colby's got you know this star name. If people like him or not, he has got the star name. So mm -hmm. it, it it makes sense for Ian Gary. It don't really make sense for Colby. I don't know why you'd want this fight. If I'm Colby, young. I'm going after Wonder Boy. Yeah, I don't know why Colby wants this fight. A young, up and coming, hungry fighter. It's got a lot to his game. It, it, it makes no sense for Colby, but it makes a lot of sense for uh, Ian Gary to fight him. But mm. I don't. What does it do to Ian Gary's career? I think it just gives him a name on his list that's quite a relevant name in the to the public. Uh, other than that, I don't know what it actually does for him. It, uh, it probably pushes really him in line to 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 the for the type for a title shot presuming they do Leon versus Bilal 
in Manchester, you would imagine mm. Gary Covington. I know because I'm because I've got the rankings up. Usman's still ranked number one. And I'm just gonna say, yeah. Usman sort of, you know, he's doing this podcast thing with Zudo. You know, both of them shilling out for Dana, sort of thing, like trying to get the next top job. So I don't know what he's doing. Mm. Like, is he still a factor at one seventy, or is he a factor at eighty five? I think it could be a factor of both. I mean, we're going to speak about a fight that was made recently later on in the show. Mm. He's one of the people in that fight he's already fought. And the other, I, th I would have thought, could have been a really good fight to make as well. However, it, it seems like they're trying to make um, Hamza a star, but we'll speak about that in a bit. Mm. In terms of Ian, Ian Gary, though, so just staying with him. Now, Colby's ranked number four. Again, I still don't know why Colby's ranked so high personally but he's ranked number four ian gary is ranked number six if i'm not seven. mistaken seven would it not make sense even though he's ranked lower would it not make sense for him to fight mvp more than colby covington well in ian gary's mind he's probably thinking mvp's below me hmm. sort of thing um but it'd be a more credible win surely Yes, but in Ian Gary's mind, he, he probably knows that, yeah, if I get a dominant win over Colby Covington, then I'm pretty much nailed the title shot. Pretty much nailed on. And I so, don't think he is, though. I think he'd still have to fight. I think he is. I think he is, because let's say Usman's not a factor at, at 170, yeah, and they run Leon versus Bilal, and Gary Covington is the next fight at the top of that division. We know there's a history with Leon mm -hmm. and Ian Gary. I did a video on it about yeah, yeah. his time at Renegade. So there is already a narrative that ready, ready to be spun. So that's why he'd get a next title shot. If there was no beef or, or if there was no issue with the gym and stuff like that, then mm -hmm. yes, I would agree with you. There wouldn't be a reason to push him for a title shot but we know the ufc is turning into the wwe we'll make it matches for storylines now not matches for who or fights that deserve it and we'll probably touch on a certain fight that's rumored to happen later on this year which is which, which is a wwe setup rather than the ufc setup don't you come at wwe like i was gonna say um... wwe <laughs> It's looking just as realistic as UFC <laughs> nowadays. Like the final boss is he ain't having none of it at the moment. You are right. Like, 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 but it, it, the MVP thing's interesting. How old's MVP? 35? 36. 36, yeah. He's older. Is he older than Covington? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. never I've never rated MVP either. So I, I I think Ian Gary beats MVP. I, I know there's a lot of MP things stand boys out there, but I think Ian Gary beats MVP. I, I really do. Two of these st I, I, re I, I think he does. He's just younger, and I think he's hungrier. I don't think MVPs are hungry. I, so. I don't think that would be a good fight, though. Not because no, I don't it wouldn't. think it would be boring. a good for MVP. It'd be boring. It would be, be boring because all we're going to get is Ian Gary running around the octagon, not wanting to engage. Yeah, Ian, Gary, Ian Gary will win that fight. Uh, just by running. And every... Uh, yeah, the... You, Dana's really fucked up, UFC. I'm sorry. The, yeah, it's, it's a bit it's, weird what's going on at the moment. It, really it's is. really messed I've got up, bad man. feeling that MVP's going to fight Joaquin Buckley next. She's got a bad feeling that yeah, he's not going to strap the rocket to MVP, and he's going to do the he's going to give him the Kayla Harrison treatment. The Kayla Harrison treatment. But the, all right, so this again is what I find, like. Buckley's now ranked ahead of MVP. That's fucking ridiculous, man. Like, I don't get that one. But hey, it, it might, it might, it might. Let me have some of these comments. Shout out to Football Gosper. Shout out to Franklin Cap Spells. Shout out to Zabiri. Big up yourself, bro. Um, yes, it is hay fever that seems to have started already now this year. So good luck for the rest of the season and the year for me now. Uh, shout out to SKE15. Um, yeah, I mean, asking the questions completely up to you. If it's a Liverpool football related, though, probably wait till the end of the show before we address it. Yeah. Um, shout out to Boo Ryder in the comments. Real eyes, real lies, real lies. Um, Shavkot versus JDM winner gets the next title shot after Bilal. It all depends when that fight happens, to be honest, though. I think that'll be around they're both injured. Yeah, they're both injured. injured. 
And um, shout out to A9 and obviously shout out to the one and only Top Troll, <laughs> aka Chris Brack, saying, speaking of WWE, Bret Hart is still overrated, not even the best wrestler from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. I just, Jay, you actually agree with that comment, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Breaks my heart every time I hear that that statement. Tell you what does break hearts, though, is this situation with UFC gloves. So Matt Brown has spoken about the situation where Chris Weidman um, had a few eye pokes at the weekend on his win. And he had this to say. Every fight, I, I guarantee, was sitting there saying the same S. When are we going to fix these gloves? How many eye pokes are we going to see before we effing fix these gloves this isn't even a complicated problem make it easy to make a fist if you should have to force anything it should be to force your hand open now i don't know if either of you ever saw trevor whitman on the joe rogan podcast a couple of years back trevor whitman who is the trainer for uh kamar usman justin gaethje rose nama Yunus, has actually created a MMA glove and it is actually a brilliant design probably the best designed MMA gloves out there he came to the UFC with said idea and they loved it as well however the business side is what's holding back those gloves being produced because they wanted to I think okay. have rights to the patent and obviously Trevor Whitman said well no that's not going to happen I created this so I'm not going to just get cut out of the picture as a result, UFC are stuck with their gloves. I cannot tell you the last time I watched a fight card and not and didn't see at least three or four eye pokes on a night. Sometimes three or four eye pokes in a fight. How are we 300 pay-per-views in almost and hundreds of shows later and still haven't rectified this problem? And do you think, like Jay, I'll come to you first on this one. Do you think this is something that really needs to be sorted out ASAP now? Yeah, look, the gloves. I, 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 I've got two things on this. I think the fighters have got to learn to not poke people in the eyes. Firstly, mm. you know, you shouldn't be reaching out like that, and that's yeah. what they're doing. They're reaching out like that. I don't know why you're reaching out like that. You should only reach out. I, I think you change the rules. You reach out with a fist and not an open hand. That's the how problem you with that though is that if you're parry, you can't parry a fist. Like so, if a fist oh, is coming, I'm trying to in like if a fist mm. coming, you can't parry it. You have to parry it like that. Yeah, then the, then you got to be like fingers up to parry. You shouldn't have to be fingers forward to parry. So, yeah. Yeah, anyone who comes with their hand open towards a, another person's face, referee's got to step in and stop it. Um. Also, with the gloves, the gloves. I don't the, the Whitman glow. Whitman's a bitch. Let's face it. Like, that's just <laughs> if, yo. If he, where if did he, that come from? If he if he's talking about protecting the fighters and all this, just give him the patent. They're gonna pay you off handsomely. You're gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> I don't think they were gonna pay him very well though. Well, uh, hey, Jeremy, this is Dana. Dana doesn't pay. Uh, you well. if, if, if he wants, well. like, he wants to look after his own pockets. He don't care about the fighters. If he cared about the fighters, he would have let them have the gloves. Simple as that. Simple as that. He's looking after himself. He's looking after himself, like all them coaches do. They're the boringest coaches in MMA. You know, I, I'm sick of them. You know, grand work and holding people down. Don't be exciting. Just get the W. I'm sick of all this. Crap. Yo, hey, hey, this is Trevor Whitman that that smiled and Leon Edwards head kicked Kamara yeah, Usman. Kamara, did you? Yeah, this guy mad, man. loves his fighters getting KO'd. I hate Whitman, man. Just give the man gloves, man. Just give them the gloves because they are good gloves. The pack, like he, he showed them, they're brilliant. You can't really yeah. poke yeah. in them. You can do submissions. Because the whole point is, they thought if you put, if you wrap the hands up too much, you ain't gonna be able to do submissions and grapple yeah. and stuff like that. So, but Whitman's done it beautifully. Just let him have the gloves, man. Come to a he, circle, come to a thing where they pay Whitman handsomely. You call them the Whitman gloves, so he always get a little, you know, three percent cut or whatever it is yeah. of all fighters that wear his gloves. And everyone's got a, uh, everyone's safe. You got no more eye pokes. Whitman makes some money, and the fighters are safe. Can't see the problem, but he's been a bitch. Simple as that. 
Hey, if you, anyone's you agree? Bitch, or do you think UFC should make a change to their yeah, current? If anyone's players? being a bitch, it's Dana and the UFC. Mm. He's the one that's being the bitch because this is classic Dana undercutting, undercutting to make everything his own. Just why don't you just you know say that you can have the gloves? We'll take a little cut. You you take a little cut, Bob. You know, done. Yeah. Done. Instead of trying to take everything, the UFC make record revenues last year, and you tell him you're so desperate for that for that patent on that glove. You're that desperate because how much extra money is it going to make you? How much? Yeah. yeah. To be honest, I, I get what you're saying. You're right. Like, don't we know how tight Dana is? But I, I, I just feel like we would have these gloves now if Whitman just said, yeah. Dana would pay for it all. But he's obviously saying no, and that's why no one's got the gloves right there. And it's that the UFC have been... not made their own. Like, I am shocked they've just not made their yeah, own. Yeah, that, 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 the thing is, though, if you look, this, if Dana wants to be a, a, the D bitch, he would copy Whitman's idea because he hasn't painted it. I'm yet. shocked Dana's not done it. I'm and, just, and just copy his idea and make them, you know, and then Whitman's fucked. You know, I, 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 like. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. So, well, this, this is the one. thing. I, I don't think the UFC see the gloves as an issue, which for me is crazy because I think if you get rid of eye pokes or the, the risk of eye pokes, you have a better product. If you have a best, better product, you have better fights. If you have better fights, you make more money. For me, it's one of the weirdest decisions that the UFC haven't done anything about. It. And, and the fact that, let's be honest, guys, we've done countless pay per views together now. How many times do we watch pay per views and go, oh, it's an eye poke? Like it, it's Too it many. happens every single fight. Guarantee UFC 300 will see these two to three eye pokes. Uh, guaranteed. I, I'd make a fight with no gloves. Job done. What bare knuckle MMA? Like, ma- no uh, gloves. Look, well, I don't understand why we have gloves in your MMA anyway. So, we don't yeah, have gloves. You, don't, I mean, you don't pad an elbow. You don't put, <laughs> or, or, you, or a knee put, or a shin. You don't put a knee, you don't put padding on your elbow. You don't wear, you know. I'd rather get hit by a fist than my elbow. I'm telling you that right now. If someone comes at me with my elbow like that to my jaw, I'd rather mm. take a fist. Um, so we don't pad elbows. So I don't I don't personally get it. I can Anyhow, literally choke a man, I can literally chunk a man unconscious. And if the referee don't let go, that man's passing away. Do you know what I mean? But it, no, it's true though. Yeah. But I yeah. can't but I, but I've got to pad up my fists. Makes no sense to me, you know. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. We're, it's MMA. It's a brutal sport. This is not boxing. You know, we don't, you know, it's just, it, it's mad to me. What if a toe catches you in the eye, by the way? What's so the this happened with, happen? This happened with Kat Zingano What's the difference? and Megan Adamson. What's, what's the difference? What's the difference of a toe catching your eye to a finger? Pretend no, I, actually, <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah, I think um, Kat Zingano actually lost a fight because of that. I don't, I don't think you actually can get done for that. If you can't, if like someone's toe goes in your eye, I don't think. Yeah, so you're you throwing be... a leg kick, and the foot is meant to hit you in the face, but you have toes at the end of your foot. If they hit you in the eye, they can't. There's nothing that happens. Uh, so are you, is that you saying an eye poke? Play on, man. Should... Play on. <laughs> Play on. <laughs> Play on. <laughs> you know, yeah, so I've seen against uh, John Jones. He probably, he probably would have beaten him if he could just eye poked him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play on, man. I, I just, yeah, like if you can get, if it's not, you don't have to stop a fight for a toe in the eye, but you do have for a finger in the eye, but you don't wear anything on your feet, don't wear anything on your hands. I reckon yeah. you'll have a lot less um, pokes with nothing on your hands. Because then you can parry better without a a, a hand a, like a, a glove that's not that's bending your hand a little bit. So I reckon if you get rid of gloves, I bet you get no pokes. I, I, I think in terms of things to fix within MMA and especially the UFC, eye pokes is on that list, but it's not particularly high up. There are other mm. things that the UFC needs to sort out, like <coughs> commentary and um, <coughs> knees to a ground of the opponent. Please, please production. change that rule. Production. I hate how Dwayne Sterling, Henry Zahudo, you know, getting away with, with um, are we putting like one one knee on the ground? No, kick him in the bloody head if necessary. Stop. Nah, sorry, sorry. 
do yeah. do not advocate to that. <laughs> what Mark, got Jamie, and Mark, Jamie and Mark Goddard. Hey, <laughs> I'm Mark telling Goddard's you. got some. Hey, he's got some Roy rage. Mark Goddard's the best ref in MMA. Um, yeah, for me. Uh, Jamie wants Fedor and Ra- uh, Rambledon, uh, uh, Random days back. Yes, That's I do. Because Pride was Pride. Pride FC was the best MMA organization of all time. So would you? Yeah, imp- yeah. So you'd implement soccer kicks and and yeah. What are we doing now? <laughs> UFC, right? In, UFC is the pussy league. Let's put it this way, yeah. Right? <laughs> the one's much more brutal. Right? You got Pride stomps, soccer kicks. Oh, it's beautiful. It was it's proper I fighting. Have yeah. Stomps, but like I'd have the knees to the oh. opponent. That but, role, uh, like, but you're, you're got, I've, got, I've got a hand yeah, on the floor. Go. I've got a hand on the floor. Don't need me. Don't need me. What's this shit about? <laughs> yeah, it's fried skin. Going, it's MMA. As long as no one dies, let's fight, man. Do you know, no, I'm, like you're allowed. To, I can break someone's ankle. I can break, break a knee. Arms. I can break someone's arm. If the ref don't stop it, I'm not letting go. But no. if I put a little hand on the floor, you can't need me. What are we doing? <laughs> you sound like what? John Cena there. Yeah. <laughs> you can't <laughs> leave me. <laughs> what? This is what I'm saying. What are we doing, man? I just, yeah, just. I, I, I wish for Pride Days back, man. I want roided up beasts, soccer kicking. Well, yeah. well I mean, man. that I, might I be happening in the UFC what? as we speak. Like Give it to me. Give it to me. One day I say, well, Crow Cop is the best fight. I've not seen a better fight in MMA. The best fights I've ever seen in MMA have all come in Pride. None of them in UFC. Could be right. Could be right. So, just a round answer then. Do you think UFC will do anything about the gloves, or do you just think they'll just continue to ignore it? They're ignoring it till they're ignoring it till. Uh, I mean, look, he's been lost tonight. I didn't give a shit, did I? So, that was that was to <laughs> um, that, was a, that was to do a head kick though. But again, yeah, Vitor shouldn't even be allowed to fight. He was juiced to the gills. Yeah, so and that, that was a, and that. That was a foot with toes on the end of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, very dude. true. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, well, UFC's a pussy league. That's where I'm fine. But even that for UFC's younger. Right, Mano Fioro dispatched of Erin Blanchfield, who was seen as the the next in line to be the champion at the 125 division. And um, Fioro, after her win against Rose Nami Yunus, came into this fight. I don't even think she was the favourite for this fight. However, she did win the unanimous decision. Not the most exciting of fights, but she got the job done. Now, we know Grasso and, and uh, Jamie's um, wife in waiting, Valentina Shevchenko. <laughs> <laughs> How you've got that on demand, just like that. <laughs> Jamie's wife in waiting, Valentina, are due to fight soon. Do you think Fioro should take another fight between now and getting a title shot or do you think she should just wait and and wait to see what she happens sh- she should wait man she should, <sighs> she should just wait because i don't want to see a wait. fight again yeah she oh. should wait as you can wait. see i fell asleep there yeah yeah That's we've got we've got we've got I, I think we've got a problem with female mma fighting at the moment for you, for you, <laughs> Yo, you said it james said it in what sense yeah, go on okay. let's talk on it let's talk on yeah, it i got a problem man it's not enough I've quality got... there it's not enough quality there. And I don't know what the reason is. I don't know what the reason is, but they're either not being booked properly, promoted properly. I just don't know what it is. It just doesn't seem to be enough higher level quality in the women right now, which is a shame because I want to see them do their thing. I just yeah. don't think they're being promoted properly either. I think Dana thinks her members are, yeah. Right. Like Dana, we've always said, he's never going to do an all-female pay-per-view in UFC, is he? Yeah, there's women. not enough stars, man. Because it's not promoted, do we? Don't care. Yeah, I was going to say. Amanda Nunes then, is all over yeah. her. You know, she's retired. He still talks about her. Who's he? Oh, who else is he promoting? Well, 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 yeah. Dana didn't didn't did not want to know about her until she knocked out Cyborg, and then Dana yeah. gave a shit. Yeah, 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 and yeah. yeah. Then, Dana didn't give two fine. And you had about Cyborg, who was left out the drive by Dana by putting yeah. her in fights. Called her the people of Silver. She could, yeah, and she couldn't yeah. cut down in weight, man. And she's yeah, that was a big, crazy. They made her walk a big late. Yeah, yeah, she was on crazy. the juice. Do you know how good that is? That a bird was on the juice. I love that, man. <laughs> right, and she, she was on, right, but she can't cut down because she's a big lady anyway. She's got big shoulders, yeah, she's got a big head. 
right? <laughs> and you're trying to make a cut. No, she couldn't. No, but he's right. She couldn't. You can't make a cut. So what they're doing? Oh, I'm going to dehydrate you. I'm going to dehydrate you to make you look weak on purpose. So my my women that I actually want to be stars are not you. Even more like stars. Destroy you. Yeah. Like I said, I want 260 pound women. I want a heavyweight division. <laughs> I don't what, think we'll ever get that. I want uh, the, they, no. The, the no, problem is, there's, there's surprised. Uh, there's billions of women. Billions of women in this world. You're telling me there's no women out there? I don't think they look for them either. I don't think he looks for female. I was fighters. just going to say that. Do you think it's a scouting them. problem because UFC are constantly with like the contender series, etc. Do you think there needs to be a real effort now to find up and coming? Women fighters and yeah, and literally go and scout the world properly this, for these these new women take. female fighters. Take. Go on, go no, your hot take, man. Go your take. Nothing will happen whilst Dana is still in charge. Because Dana doesn't care. He does not care unless it's about the contender series, which gives more of a shit. Oh, he's found loads of slappers. Things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that's not a pun, by the way. I mean, select like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, mate, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me just uh, correct myself here. I weren't calling. No <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, but there's loads of females doing that now. Yeah. You know, but he can't find female MMA stars anywhere. He's telling me there's no gyms across North America, Canada, um, Asia. Brazil, England, Asia that have got no up and coming female. Or do you have to look a certain way? Or do you have to look like Mackenzie Dern? Or do you, like Valentina, like Grosso's not a, she's an attractive like You have to look, you know, um, who's the one who came out the Katy Perry song? What, Blanchfield? No, the other shit one. Macy Barber? No, the other shit one. Uh, Emmanuel Rivas? She's retired and came back. What, what, uh... Pretty girl. Oh, Misha Tate. Misha Tate. Misha Tate. Yeah, yeah. Tate. If you notice, all the women are, are you know, it, it looks Im, like Imran is um, going to be on to you if you say anything no. bad about Imran and Misha is like you and Valentina, by the way. Yeah, Misha's <laughs> great. I love Misha. Gina Carano, the best out of yeah. all of them, right? Hands yeah. down, right? You've got to look a certain way, in my opinion. I don't think he wants, I don't think he so wants he doesn't to want to introduce like another division, like the atom weight division. You just look over in one. The yeah. quality that is in the atom weight division, like he, he, he is signing women like atom weight fighters, like Michelle. What's her name now? What is it, it Michelle Waterson Gomez? Yeah. Atom weight champion. No, you're now a straw weight, yeah, undersized. Dana doesn't care. I don't want it, man. He don't like, care look, about the young stars. Man, like she dipped featherweight, done, dusted, brought over PFL's top star at featherweight. Scrap the division, go. You're cutting under 35 now. I, I I don't think Dana likes small people, right? I, 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 Dana got rid of Demetrius Johnson like it was nothing. Yeah. Oh, do you know how mad that, that is? A, that, yeah. That's a business. You, you know? Would you have got rid of Demetrius Johnson if he was 170 and above? No. Not a no chance. Dana likes, Dana likes big men. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's that, that's big what head, he, he, he he doesn't promote. If you look at the promotion for all the cards and you have seen all that heavyweight main events that no one asked for. Yeah, promoted like you wouldn't believe. The little guys that are so talented never really promoted. Idiots never get in Real Madrid. Can we just stop this bollocks? It's never going to happen. You don't think yeah. he will? No, no man. Me and Luke spoke about this last week. I, I just he's not he, man. Do you know no. why he's never going to do it? Because Ilya's not going to sell out the Bernabeu. And there's no way he's going Same to pay out for a sold out Bernabeu. He's going to have a half sold out Bernabeu when he, he when we all know the capacity is eighty something thousand. You don't think if Ilya versus Max Holloway and you pack out the card with, with good European fighters, you don't reckon he could sell it out? Who the hell? Money, so no. Who the hell knows who them two are in Europe? Not enough publicity because he don't pub, he don't push them enough. He's not pushing them enough. Like Ilya just Ilya, beat Ilya's one of the greats of all time. And have we heard any publicity for Ilya since? Apart from when he went to Madrid and when he yeah, brought out the match ball for Georgia, he's gone quiet. Yeah, yeah. Ilya, and Ilya's not got great promotional skills, yeah? So you have to do it for him. But since he's he won and beat one of the greatest of all time, he's like, oh, fair. Well, I forgot about that now. Uh, like the Madrid but, will go. But they're promi uh, uh, promoting 
like to to the moon. Like I know, like Sugar Sean O'Malley. Like okay, he's not my cup of tea. Yes, he did sort of turn me around a bit over that mar uh, with that Vero dominance. Yeah. Still got a way to go in my eyes. I think he's technically e excellent. Like to see more more of the ground game, which I think we'll get when he fights Marab. But like, are they pushing him to the moon? Talking about super fights, going on podcast saying that he could beat a Prime McGregor at forty five. You're trying like you're bleeding cake house on yet. You're smoking <laughs> a finest joint. I'm thinking that that you can beat me. Uh, I can uh, beat McGregor uh, right now. 25, yeah, boom. Shut your mouth, Jamie. You don't fucking beat me on 45, yeah? Shut your mouth, Jamie. I'll kill McGregor right now. Kill McGregor. But look, if Ilya, to sell out Roberta Bell, you'd need, to, you'd need one of the greatest cards UFC have ever done. You'd need Conor McGregor you'd to need come one back of, and say, you and, fight a featherweight. And Ilya wouldn't be even able to... Like, to sell out the Bernabeu, I think we forget how big that is. Eighty odd thousand people. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't do a stage, so you, you, because you haven't got a stage and a Titan Trons and all that, you, you're gonna have the whole arena because they just come out from the tunnel, won't they? So that's an eighty thousand seated arena. Do you know the card you'd have to put on to sell that out? We watched a card. What's the pay per view we watched the other day when it wasn't even sold out? Yeah. And that was, you know, and that was a you know, that no, no, wasn't sold out. Yeah, that's the card we were watching, weren't it? With the receipts yeah. everywhere, weren't they? Yeah. It's just that, that, that doesn't a... like doing stadium shows. One, because it is open there and, and Dana doesn't like it. And like, yeah, you're not allowed fresh air lizards. And, um, it, uh, lizards, like, lizards don't like fresh air, that's why. Lizards don't <laughs> like fresh air. <laughs> um, I remember when Izzy was like, you know, me, John Jones, Raider Stadium. I'm thinking, yeah, well, we're not getting the Raider Stadium. Yeah, they, just haven't done in, they just haven't done the Raider Stadium, have they? No, Dana could could have... that's, a, 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 that's 60, 70,000. I don't you're like it. Why it's so against doing stadium stuff like it. Take the UFC what? to the middle. You're, because you're it watch, costs too much money, man. The you're going to watch cost... Mania for a whole weekend. Oh, Mania's on my birthday as well. Have, having almost 100,000 people in there over two days. That's crazy. And, and Dana's got... Uh, and they can't... UFC can't do that. I'll tell you why UFC can't do that. Because it's not... That, this takes going to piss people off. UFC is not as popular as WWE. I'm just saying. No, it's not. Right I don't think. I mean, and, people will be annoyed by it, but I think yeah. it's not even right. trying to. And he doesn't it. like. It doesn't promote like that. Like he promotes one guy at a time, and that's it. He doesn't promote people that sh like John Jones. Does not need promoting anymore. He's John Jones. He sells yeah. himself. You know what I mean? Let's get behind people that need promoting, but he doesn't care. I mean, he even UFC care. 300, I know we'll, we'll speak about this maybe oh, more next man, week. Man, man. Really? It's not even really... That that car's not really been promoted greatly, in my opinion. 300? No. Not at all. Just because it's UFC 300, that does not promote promote itself. Because I think people are still pissed about how how you've chucked together the main event on a day's notice Yeah. against a guy that isn't even fully recovered. That guy's on a rampage like Jamal Hill. What the fuck are you on, man? Like, Tweeting about stuff. Get, hey, your fight I, title I, fights I in two like, weeks. I, yeah? I actually like. I like what Jamal Hill was doing. Yeah, you better like... turn up. Yeah, you, I bet. I hope that that Achilles is healed, yeah. Because if you lose, yeah, don't start making excuses. Well, I've, I've already. If 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 Pereira's still got hair and a fade on that fight, I think Jamal Hill wins because I don't know what's happened to him. You know, yeah. I, I, I... Yeah, if, he, if he goes <laughs> bald, then you know he's probably. If, if Pereira, yeah. <laughs> you know, if he gets announced that he split up with with another girlfriend. Shaves yeah. that hair, it gives in the eyes. Yeah, he's a scary dumb. man. But that, if that was not USC three hundred, would you know it was happening next week? Yes, yeah, I've not even. Yeah. Have you seen an advert for it on TNT Sport? No, no, absolutely nothing. Like obviously, no, do, you know mad, do you know how mad that is? And that's yeah. next weekend. They should be pumping everything into that. Doesn't care. Well, do you right, know what so adverts think... I have seen of? Slap you... all over YouTube. Do you oh. think then it's the case of do you think they're spreading themselves too thin then and, and taking on too many fights? Have they got too many fighters on their roster? I said, th I said this months ago, didn't I? Yeah, they, do too many, they do too many shows because, too because many the contract shows. they signed with ESPN, it's like they have to put on like 50 events a year and they've got over 700 fighters on, on, on the UFC roster, and half of them are meaty. Meaty fighters, fighters that you don't even des to deserve to be there. He loves the contender series. Loves That's the contender series, which which screams that he does not 
okay, people could look at it and say, of course Dana cares because he's bringing in, you know, young and up-and-coming fighters. Like, but Dana doesn't, Dana doesn't care because the UFC is a cash cow. Oh, Did they you, almost... If it, I mean, I, I I know it's obviously annoying for people who don't like WWE to hear comparisons. You see how WWE have got NXT, which is almost like a developmental, but in front yeah. of people. Does the UFC need something similar to that, where you've got the main shows in your, your Raws, your Smackdowns, your pay-per-views, where you have the, your best fighters on that, and then you have like an NXT type of card? Because at the moment, Contender Series isn't NXT. It's almost like the level before NXT. N- NX, sorry. The contender series feels like the indies, whereas NXT, yeah, yeah. there's nothing there where you've got that, mm. as you said, that crop of fighters loop who aren't quite great enough to be recognized as UFC fighters or top UFC fighters. That's what the Apex cards are there for, Carl. Right. Oh, guess who, do you know what's going at the Apex, by the way? NXT. Yes, Battleground. Yeah, NXT at Battlegrounds the at the Apex. Yeah. You're joking. Yeah, NXT yeah. Battlegrounds at the Apex. Hey, wow. speaking, of, speaking of the Apex, right? I think but you are right, Cal. You are right. I agree. There needs to be something, doesn't there? There's yeah, too I, many I, fights. There's so many fight weeks, like fight nights yeah. on the weekend that I don't care about. Hey, guys, a quick question. What's the main event this weekend? In what? Hold on. UFC oh, this think... weekend. No oh. idea. You mentioned it last week, Jamie. That's gone out my door. I know it's I know it's um uh, Rock and Roman Reigns versus uh <laughs> Seth Rollins exactly. and Cody Rhodes. Hey, Cal, you don't need to that, say Oh, it. I thought no, I thought you said oh I thought you were talking about UFC because isn't there a UFC card coming up yeah, this week? Yeah, what's not... the main event? Oh I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's Who is uh, it? Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. Oh too. yes, that's right. Yeah, and if you go on the TK if you go on the TKO stuff on online, they're only promoting mania. Yeah. <laughs> don't care. It, 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 uh, the UFC stuff's mad. Need, I need to take a leaf out of WWE, like not even yeah. with like the NXT stuff. Like promote the fight is like let them have a little bit of personality. Like I don't know, they can't different entrances, different, different types of shorts. Like yeah. like when Izzy did did the Undertaker thing, I can love that. Yeah, they yeah, they played the music and all that, and then it came through his music, and, and then like, everyone was like, yeah. Everyone M- loved it. MVP spoke about that to Ariel Hawani. He said he had a great idea where he was going to, um, because his brother is pretty much same height, same build as him. So he's going to have his brother in the cage, him at the entrance. They were going to flip between the two and the, making yeah. it almost an illusion of how's he there, but there at the same time. You have to just shut it down. Yeah. Because they don't like, want entertainment. They think it's phony. You're there to fight, but you're also there to sell tickets and promote these fighters. And that's meant to be the point of it. You want these fighters to be the biggest. Like, go back. Um, MMA thing, it, it, MMA show the other day put, um, yeah, big up in man. Big up, <laughs> big, big, big up, <laughs> Uh, but you know, they, everyone, uh, all these MMA podcasts and all that keep doing the UFC 100 watch alongs. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah, recently. yeah, yeah. You keep going, that card to this 300 card is night and day for superstar potential. Yeah, yeah, star power. It's night and day. That one hundred, even the two hundred card. We didn't get the main event we should have for Jones Cormier, but yeah, you know, it, silver you know, this, and yeah, yeah. And this three hundred card is just naff. And then you're putting, is it Bo Nickel? They put in the paint on. Oh, yeah. Bo Nickel's opening the bloody card, man! Like what? But they t- like? did they take Jerry uh, Gerard, or whatever his name is off the card? Yeah, right, yeah. I've heard that they yeah. changed that now. And they put Bo Nickel on because that's the man Dana wants to get behind. Yeah. Pause. Yeah. yeah. Last time that I thought he tried to push a fight early was, uh, was it Joe Pfeiffer got pushed and got um, also Edmund, Edmund, um, Edmund Shabazian as well. Yeah, just because he got his ass whooped by one uh, by Ronda since he was 16. It, yeah. it, 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 from 16 years it, it's old. a shame because UFC have got a talent roster second to none with tremendous fighters. But none of them are allowed. But none of them are allowed to, ex- you know, yeah, show their selves, express their selves. Destination promotion. Yeah, exactly. They always will be the PFL. Yeah, they always will be, man. But Jack MVP. Yeah. Or Kayla Harrison. Yeah. I just made them just, just the next fighter. Pay so it's fighters. almost better for now for these fighters to try and go somewhere else before they go to the UFC. Then. Yeah, I think one FC is personally the best MMA comment competition out there but yeah I, I, I just, if i if i'm up and coming mma fighter now ufc's always going to be your goal because they're number yeah. one in town but 
you know when you go there, you're limited. You got to wear whatever costume they want you to wear. Yeah. You got to be able to speak a certain way. Gonna have speak to kiss out Dana. And you can't, you know, you got to come out of a tunnel. You know, uh, no, you can't have your own. You know, you got shit. You can't no, have no pyro, gimmick, no nothing. No, yeah, can you imagine no on pyro? To, no. Why is it Goldberg theme song? Yeah. Why is it like in boxing? Do you know what I love about boxing? Yeah, the they just come out to their own thing. They they put on a show even before they come out. The I don't think they don't want entrance. people to come out of like artists or anything evil, which is because it costs money. Oh, but 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 Dana can walk out with uh, the next president of the United States. Yeah, they, yeah. Hey, for, his own, for his own ego. For his know, own this, ego. This be Donald J. Trump. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love Donald Trump. Next president of the United States, the great United States. If I was American, <laughs> if I was American, I'd be ticking a cross by Trump's name. Don't get me wrong. Man. Probably, have, yeah, he's probably but, the least of all evils at the moment. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> but, it, but Danny can do that. But Izzy can't do the thing with his brothers. Yeah. It's makes mad. no sense makes no sense very true very true guys if you haven't already smashed that like button subscribe to the channel also make sure you click the link in the description subscribe to jamie's channel and luke's channel as well one fight that was announced as ufc are going to saudi arabia which is going to be a hell of a card as well is hamzat chamayev taking on rob whitaker 185 which i think is almost a certain title eliminator then it confirmed that as much yeah it should be do you think this is going to be Hamzat's biggest test, or do you think we've already seen it in him fighting Usman, even though it was on short notice? Hamzat's going to get smoked. Barbecue. This is his biggest test, man. This is his biggest test. This yeah. ain't a, you know, we get Kamara off the couch a week before. This is a former champion, a mm -hmm. legit 185er. Okay. We may have some issues over Robert Whitaker. Hope Drifty's not, you know, not lurking, <laughs> but there are some concerns over him, especially after the way he ended the first round off the cost of fight and how DDP dispatched him. So there's issues there. Yeah. If Robert Whitaker can survive the first round, then he will win this fight because Hamzat Jamayev um, has got that bedroom cardio. One round, you're done. There's no more extra rounds in him because he should have <laughs> lost that fight to Kamara Usman. Yeah. Or he should have drawn. The fact that he got a win was a robbery. That's a robbery. Yeah, man. So this is his biggest mm. test. And the, the way it's shaped, um, I don't know whether or not you're going to touch on 305's potential main event. I don't know whether or not that you want to sort of... Yeah, we, I mean, we can do. It looks like it's going to be Izzy versus Duplessis. Which is I another think. disgrace. Because you're talking yeah, about I don't, I Ilya think Spain. You guys know how big of an Izzy fan I am. I don't get how he gets this fight. Yeah, um, no because... DDP in, in Africa, no, Dana, like like uh, you promised, saying that DDP can fight in Africa. Yeah, ex like, exactly. Right. Me, right, me, yeah. me and Luke, we, we ranted at this last week, didn't we, Luke? It's just, yeah, and it's and unbelievable. I, I will cook it's again. It's right there. I will the cook again. The Africa, the pay per view you could make in that South Africa, that is your main event. You can have Usman in the undercard, you know, all like these great African fighters that you can give time to there and promote properly and go, you know, you're homecoming, let's put on a show. But no, let's not do that. Let's do it in the sphere in Las Vegas because that, no, that, no, that electric no, ball needs a fight. Or in Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the easy fight's in Australia and Izzy's backyard. That's, basically. Said, that's the WWE. Yeah. Storyline build because the way that they've cooked everything up, Cal. Yeah, if Izzy, but Izzy lost, himself's not even Australian, nah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, well, he lives in New Zealand. Zealand the way don't that he? they're he cooking it together, that they have found multiple ways to keep Izzy in title shots. Remember when WWE went through a patch, right? And they had the same four fighters fighting over the same belt for like four months, like yeah. Seth, Roman. Kevin yeah, Owens, Chris Jericho, he had that combination of fighters. We just repeated it now. Because mm. if DDP beats Izzy, Izzy gets a rematch. And then if Izzy wins and DDP gets a trilogy, boom. Then if Izzy wins, he can tell DDP to go F off. I'll, I'll fight Hamza. Yeah. And then if Hamza beats Izzy, Izzy gets rematch. You know, we're just keeping Izzy, you know, keeping him spinning because he's probably the biggest active fighter on the roster at the moment. Yeah. Mm. But he does not deserve it. This guy said that he was out to 2027. And I know what they're going to spin because I can see it predicted it. They want Izzy Pereira for three. Izzy to go up to light heavyweight. 
but they want Izzy to have the belt. Because for me, that was UFC 300's main event ready, and it got ruined by Sean Strickland. That's why the UFC had absolutely screwed Strickland out of the rematch, rightly or wrongly. I think rightly, because Strickland's a nutcase, by the I way. Don't, I don't cool. think Izzy's going to fight Pereira at 205. I just don't. I think he knows he gives up every advantage in that. No, it's Izzy can't fight two hundred five. Or what I saw he's him too lately, small. It's not even big. He's not even building himself out to be a two hundred five fighter. Yeah, like and he's, got, big, he's not big, even a big eighty fiver. Nah, but going back to Hamza, Hamza is Hamza is the most overhyped, overprotected fighter in the history of MMA. Mm. In, in my opinion, it's it's so overprotected, it's mad, and coming off an, a a win against Usman when people don't think he won to then get a fight against one of the greats ever in this division and possibly yeah. get a title shot is madness. You should have Costa or Cannonier or like madness. even run it with Jack Amanson. Yeah, he should it's be mad. Rankings rank. don't mean anything, like I've been yeah. saying for a while. Like, they don't mean anything. It's money I, I'll be honest, the fight I've wanted to see was Whitaker versus Usman. Yeah, at 85. If, if Usman's going to be serious and go up to 85, Whitaker Usman for me is the fight. Be a nice fight, that'd be a nice fight, man. That'd be a good fight. Big facts. But let's just right. just on that Saudi card, though, it is a very good card. I'll just read out the um, the fights from the card. So you've got Pavlovich versus Volkov in the co main, you've got uh, Shara versus Pateria, which is a very good fight. Two up and coming fighters. Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez and Vulcan Uzdemir versus Johnny Walker. So a very good card, which will be happening on the 22nd of June. Yeah, I just need the main event. Talk about that Saudi card quickly. Brilliant. That's a decent yeah, I just card. have to mention the Saudi card quickly because yeah, go for it. Know, me and Jamie discussed that. The UFC, I don't know if not you saw the leaked fight card for Saudi. Oh, yeah, it wasn't Absol good. What an absolute disgrace. You're talking about the UFC yeah. shorts changing. How dare you? Yeah. Go to Saudi and thinking that you can shortchange them with the potential. Well, apparently Saudi. Uh, that's probably. Uh, I mean, that's apparently what um, Ariel said. He said Saudi turned around and said that car's not coming to us. Like, yeah, the cheek, the cheek. Then he thinks, yeah, Mokai of uh, Paris main event. Yeah, and Saudi's gone. You're crazy. Off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come, out with, come out with a better card, and that card is stacked because Saudi basically said, if you want to have your annual show. I think the UFC are going to have an annual show, just like they're going to have an annual show in Australia. You need to produce better than that. And the UFC have been forced to produce better, probably pay out the nose a bit, which means they're going to screw over another card later on when they just fill it up with the Contender Series rubbish. Yeah, they need to do better. You're right. They do need to do better. All right, people. One more uh, topic to discuss a bit of a fun one, but George St. Pierre recently went on the Kamara Usman and, and um, Sahudo podcast and was asked about Khabib, and this is what he had to say. My go. <laughs> People were telling me that Khabib, after he fought uh, Justin Gaethje, was going to grab the mic and call me out. So that uh, means Khabib would have gone up to 170 pounds you guys would have fought. I think it would be either 170 or, or a meet in the middle. I think. Most guys that fought Khabib were afraid of Khabib's takedown, so they were fighting on their heels and they were getting backed up to the walls. Khabib could have beat me. You know, I don't, I'm not saying I would have beat Khabib all the time. I'm just, I was confident enough to take that fight that I'm, I was thinking that if I take that fight, I'm going to beat him that day at that particular place at that particular, you know, that doesn't mean I will beat him all the time. You have to think in a way that you tell yourself, if that happened, I'm going to do that. I think a lot of guys, they make the mistake going into the fight. Say, hey, I'm, I don't want to go there. And once they go there, they panic. Many people's goat, GSP, says that he would use <laughs> Khabib's, <laughs> Jamie's face. He would use Khabib's strength and use that and turn that into weakness of his forward pressure. Do what you think pressure? GSP would yo, yo, what yourself? <laughs> what forward pressure? The man's the decision maker. Decision, decision, decision. There's no forward pressure in GSP's locker. No, no, no as in no, as in Khabib's Khabib's forward pressure. He said he would turn Khabib's forward pressure and, and use that against him. What and just get a decision. Oh wow. Great. I uh, just <laughs> yo, 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 don't disrespect GSP like that. Do not. GSP struggled with a one-eyed Michael Bisping. It's just, I'm not. But he's a lot heavier than Khabib, though. 
Yeah, I, I just I, I don't rate GSP like a lot of other people do, and I think Khabib will just wipe the floor of him. Yeah, do take you? him down, take no, him down, sit no. on him. Chuck GSP definitely. won't have a chance. GSP doesn't fight regularly enough in at that time to do anything to Khabib. Anything, mm. not a thing. Khabib would just wipe the floor of him. I think yes. If, if the fight was at sixty-five or seventy. I think GSP does Khabib. I don't know. I don't see him knocking him out. So it'd be another decision. I don't think he'd... I actually think he could stop Khabib. No. Nah. There's, there's, there's one person that could do it in and around that weight class. It, it would have been... Usman just... I mean, for me would have, would have, would have smoked Khabib. But he, he, Khabib would never have taken that fight. I don't know. He lost to Matt Hughes. He lost to Sarah. I, I don't see him being Khabib. I mean, Khabib's yeah. 300 pounds now, so he might fight him there, but it's just... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't... I, I, no, nah, I, I, I don't see him... It'd be a five-round war, I would have thought, because it would be a main event. Um, At that time, when the fight was meant to be scheduled, I don't think GSP would ever go five rounds with Khabib. That'd be the issue. And Khabib will get him down. There's no doubt about that. He takes everyone down. And he's wrestling is on another level to GSPs. Another level. Yeah, just have to say, yeah. Hmm. Um, Dustin Poirier nearly, nearly finished Khabib. Yeah, that Dustin Poirier beat GSP. GSP taps that motherfucker out. Yeah? Uh, Poirier <laughs> beats GSP. Simple. Oh, I'm telling you right now, this GSP no, hype... No, 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 no. This no, GSP no, hype's no, got to calm no, down, no, man. No, 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 I don't no, know. No. I think GSP smokes. Oh, wait, what, what, what GSP... What GSP are we talking about? We're talking about are, we, are we talking about steroid GSP or steroid oh. free GSP? <laughs> I'm talking about the yeah, GSP. Who's your goat? Who's who's my your goat? goat. My goat. Yeah. Um, oh, probably either. If you say who I think it is, I'm either Fedor or Wanderlei Silva. Oh, what the hell is your goat? Yeah, maybe Wanderlei Silva. Oh. No one hey, ever beat him. I was due to the way. girls as well. Yeah, so I like it, man. But he got decisions. <laughs> but he beat the shit out of fighters. No <laughs> decisions. Um, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just uh, yeah, I, I don't think it depends when they fall. I suppose in what year. Well, if... it, it it would have been after Khabib fought Gaethje. So Khabib was almost peaking, and GSP was out of his peak. Yeah, so Khabib would have mopped the floor with him. Yeah, you think? Mocked... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been competitive. I think GSP. I think Khabib would have got the decision. Yeah, Khabib's active. He's active. He's Khabib. And that time, you've got to remember, if I remember rightly, um, GSP put on a bit of weight as well. He had to come yeah, down. Yeah, he struggled with that weight. Yeah, yeah, and he struggled with his weight as he got older. That's why he went up to 185 to fight Bisping, because he did struggle. I don't think I don't think he could get Dan. Uh, no, no, it's the other way. He struggled to get up to that weight. Did he? Yeah, he struggled. That's He, he, could, he, deliver, he developed a condition because he was trying to eat too much to get up to 85. Right, yeah, not by the look of him now. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I don't know. Out. I don't know. I just don't think he. Uh, I don't. I, I literally don't think he beats him. I think Khabib, as much as I think he's a little overrated, I still think he beats GSP because it's just his wrestling, man. It's just on another level. It's ridiculous. And GSP's wrestling is great for a man who never trained in it. It's it's fantastic. But yeah, I don't. I don't think that Khabib. But uh, I, I, I think Khabib just. Does it's the most boringest fight in MMA history if they fought? That could potentially happen. That could they could just cancel each other out. That, GSP, how many exciting fights have you ever been in? Well, the Bisping fight was exciting, but before yeah. that, yeah, they were most boring they fighter. Meant, the thing is, he changed oh, his style after he got beat by Sarah, didn't he? Yeah, before he fought, before he fought Sarah, GSP was I loved the guy. And yeah. then he just chat. He got with that that, that coach of his, just because I remember Dana's feuding with the coach because Dana was getting irritated with GSP just going to decisions constantly yeah. when he's a killer. And yeah, I just I, don't know. I, I just I just think it'll be a boring fight, and Khabib will just sit on him. He's wrestling superior. He's wrestling the best I've ever seen in the MMA. In the MMA full stop. So yeah. what could be wrestling? Yeah, I don't think it's anyone's best. Don't think, I, I don't, don't know who's his better. I, I, it, it, I, I saw him wrestling DC. He killed him. 
Yeah, yeah let's talk about DC the better, yeah. Yeah, I'll leave DC true. alone, guys. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Jones would like to come outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but boys, I've enjoyed today's show. Some uh, very thought-provoking stuff, I can't lie. That I've not even thought of. I'm, gen- I'm genuinely serious. Like, the whole promotion yeah, love and stuff. Like, I think it, that there needs to be a massive shift there. There does, or else the UFC are going to get... I, I won't say they'll get left behind, but they're going to lose a lot of fans. They're, losing. they're not careful, and they're not. They're just not going to make superstars. And this, this industry needs superstars. They need superstars to drive the economy in the yeah. in the fight business. They need them. Can't so. last week hadn't made MMA guru question his own existence. Yeah, I saw I that. <laughs> I, I, I literally, I don't see another UFC superstar ever coming along. Nope, agreed. Yeah, unless it's manufactured, and even then, it's just well, they're trying to do that with um, figure oh, out they right now, and O'Malley, ain't it? And O'Malley just comes off as that a cringe, yeah, <laughs> so it's not working. Hey, he is a definition of a cuck. I, I tell you, USC's biggest star, they just won't promote him. Oh, I believe Aspinall could be their biggest star, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not gonna happen, they that's won't promote him, they won't promote him. Because so Aspinall's got a, Aspinall's got a way of pissing people off about actually pissing people yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a gentleman, <laughs> now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. I love Tom Aspinall. But boys, before we wrap up, Jay, I'll start with you. Where can the people find you and support you, and what have you got coming up? Uh, so yeah, just say guys, YouTube at Jamie Phillips uh, Football Chats. Uh, I, I'm probably going to do a video tomorrow on the preview for the game on Thursday, and then. Probably be doing a midnight madness Thursday night as well. So yeah. sweet, sweet. Make sure you head over there, people. Click link in the description. And Luke, what have you got coming up? And where can people find you and support you as well, please, bro? Well, well, you can find me on my channel, Luke uh, Luke Tanner. Uh, what's coming up? I've got no idea. <laughs> no idea. Like I'm trying to get some. Like, I'm trying to reach out to fighters to get interviews because those are more interesting than doing previews for cars I don't watch. <laughs> Because uh, that's the way the product's going. Like, I I don't watch cards that aren't the numbered cards because mm. I don't want to put myself through that. So you see, up your quality, and maybe maybe I might use some more content on you. Very true. Very true. Do you know what? Before we go, are we at fault as well for not covering? I know it's difficult. Are we at fault it's as well for not covering UFC and not covering the other promotions as well? Then. Oh yeah, the, so we almost yeah, we so almost we're like the easy. UFC. The PFL's worse, Bellator's worse. Mm-hmm. One's probably better is in quality wise, but the promotion, the way yeah. we can watch it, is probably more difficult. That's probably why yeah, we don't. Yeah, but mo- most people watch UFC, don't they? Because that's the thing. Let's be real. WWE only started improving once AEW came about because they knew they they had to kind of oh, kick mate. in you again. Obviously. Vince CM going Punk helped a lot as well. Cooked AEW, by the way. Oh, he battered AEW. On- oh, yes. Punk's interview. Uh, it was just, yeah. That was yeah. fantastic. Do you know what? I know, I, know, I know people don't like Ariel. I know people don't. But you see that interview? That, for me, showed why he is one of them. Oh, it, Ariel, Ariel one is done. Uh, did you see how Ariel ended the whole MMA hour as well? Huh. Because um, uh, Becky Lynch came and attacked. Um, <laughs> Rhea Ripley live, didn't they? It was obviously planned. Yeah. And then and then Ariel Wani ended the MMA hour quoting Tony Khan saying he feared for his life, didn't he? It was hilarious. Because <laughs> 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 <It's laughs> he hates Tony Khan because I had that interview yeah. and Tony was terrible in that interview. Yeah. Yeah. And uh Ariel, look, I, I do like it. I, I think Ariel's gonna get will work for WWE one day. I don't. I think he'll. I think Ariel's got the perfect part setup time in the sense part time sort of thing. I don't think he will. I still think he'll just freelance. I think he's got the yeah. perfect setup because he he's not bound to any contract with anyone. Can you imagine though if if because TKO own both here, but Dana hates Ariel. Can you imagine if TKO give Ariel a contract where he can cover both. You know how much that piss Dana off. Yeah, give TKO TKO give Ariel contract where he can cover UFC live events and WWE live events as their number one journalist. 
Yo, I, I, don't, I don't think he would have to. I think he's in such a setup now where he can just freelance around. And yeah, he's great, though. He's great. He's brilliant, that, mate. He's that, brilliant. Yeah. The way he interviews, he does push the envelope because he wants to yeah. get out the important things. He wants to get out everything we want our answered. Yeah, yeah, as a viewer. So I like that about him. But some people don't. I, don't. I don't. I don't get it because he broke the Brock Lesnar news an hour before UFC. So yeah, get over yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did nothing. In fact, all it did was make your show even more popular when it yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Oh, Jesus. It's not like Brock was there for a multiple contract deal. Yeah. <laughs> it it's not like Brock was going around doing a press tour about it either when he, when no. he did. No. And then so. Dana let him use whatever he wanted. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. But people, make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. A massive shout out to Luke and Jay, as always, for doing this. We'll be back next week. Going to have quite a lot of content next week on this channel. We're going to have promo videos yes. and previews. Also, check out Luke's channels for previews. Check out Jamie's channel for Liverpool content. It's going to be a busy one, people. It's going to be Jay. Not even to put you on the spot. Are you doing anything for WrestleMania? I don't know. Right. I was, uh, Sorry to put you on the spot. I've, like got, that. I've probably got to do a preview show, but I just yeah, it's just. Doing it on my channel might be a bit weird because the algorithm and all that, I don't know how it'd work and if people would watch it, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's something I want to do because I do want to chat about it. So if there's people around that want to chat about it, the more than welcome, the more I get on it and talk about it, I'll do it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's saying I'm badly, uh, I'm massively, if people don't know, I'm massively into my wrestling. So yeah, I would definitely want to do it, but it's just getting everyone, you know, can have fun with it, you know, yeah. if there's more people to come on. Indeed, well, watch this space, people. Well, people, thank you so much for joining. Shout out to you two as always. Until we're back next time, take easy, people. <laughs>